So today I am going to be giving you 10 recommendations for the Halloween or spooky season where I truly believe that all of these games will bring in that mood for you. And I'm very excited to share some of these games with you today. Now I've got a wide range of games here. I've got games that are super, super easy to play and some that get a little bit more rules heavy. Um, but either way, all of these games I still feel the same about. These are games that I would recommend for this kind of season. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off with Similo Spookies. Now, Similo is a game system that I am very, very fond of. It's essentially a deck of cards, but the cool thing about it is that this deck of cards is just of pictures and characters. And in this case, the Similo Spookies is all going to be monsters like Frankenstein, the ghost. Um, you're gonna have you know, the Wolfman, a zombie, a witch, um, an ogre, tons of cool monsters and spookies in here. And the whole game is really, really simple. Essentially, one player is going to be the clue giver. And that player is going to take um, basically the whole deck of cards and shuffle them. They're going to draw 12 cards. They're going to secretly look at the top one. And then they're going to shuffle that back into the 12 cards. And then they're going to lay them out on the table. Now, you can, take, you can play this with any number of people, any number. So uh, as long as one player is the clue giver, you can just have everybody that's at your party or at your house come together and play this. Then what they're gonna do is they're gonna have a hand of cards and they're gonna be more picture cards that were not in those initial 12. And every turn, they're going to lay down a card. They're either gonna put it uh, basically upright, which would say that it's similar to the card that they secretly saw, or uh, horizontal, which means that it's dissimilar to the secret card that they saw. What you're trying to do is you're trying to say that one monster is similar to the secret card that you saw, and you're trying to lead everybody else to eventually get to that card. It gets a little tricky with the card, with the hand of cards that you have as the clue giver, because you might want to keep one that's really similar to the main pick for a little bit later when they have less mis or when it's more easy to make a mistake. Because essentially, when you're putting down a card and you're showing that it's similar or dissimilar, the players are going to basically wipe away four cards, then they're going to wipe away three cards, and uh, it's eventually going to get down to where they only have two cards left. And then they have to choose the card that you've been leading to them to this whole time. Um, if at any point the secret card that you were trying to lead them to uh, basically gets removed from the game, then everybody loses. But if at the end it is the only card remaining and that's the secret card, then you all won. It is just a really, really fun, simple game to teach. Very, very easy to travel with. It's perfect for any game night, any party, any Halloween time. Um, it, especially good for Halloween parties because these illustrations really, the artist of this is just amazing. Um, it is it is very, very, very well done and super, super affordable. So that's going to be number one. Now, Hocus Pocus, the board game, is nostalgic for many, especially those that grew up watching Hocus Pocus. But this game is also really, really a fun game. Essentially, you're going to be going up against the Sanderson sisters. And what you're trying to do as a team with the other players is you're trying to basically solve this mind puzzle of getting all of the cauldron ingredients to be either the same color or the same type. So you'll see on the cauldron that there's going to be five different symbols in five different colors. And you're trying to get it to the point where it's all one color, um, it could be any mixture of different symbols or all one symbol of different colors. And on your turn, every player is going to have a hand of cards. And the only thing that they can talk about, they cannot talk specifics, but they can ask questions like, do you have a certain color or do you have a certain ingredient? But you can't talk about which particular ingredient and in which color. And what you're going to do is you're going to be playing a card down onto the cauldron. You're either going to play a card that matches the suit of a card but changes the color, or you're going to be playing a color, uh, or sorry, a card that matches the color of somewhere that you're playing it. 
And then as you go around the table, everyone's going to be taking turns. And it's kind of this weird kind of mind working together game where you're all trying to puzzle this out. Um, and it gets uh, more and more difficult. Once you actually fill up these uh, ingredients and basically complete a puzzle, either all the same color or all the same suit, um, you will successfully have stunned one of the Sanderson sisters. Once you have stunned uh, basically each of the Sanderson sisters, you will have won the game. There's also these little four trick tokens. These are basically one-time abilities that you can use. They usually are really, really helpful at certain particular times. And the beaks can actually help you in a variety of ways with solving the puzzle a little bit easier. Now, the hardest part of the game is that you actually have to stun the Sanderson sisters before the deck of cards runs out. And so what the witches will essentially be doing is they're actually going to be discarding cards from your deck. And that is going to make it a quite a bit more tough for you to actually get the game finished. Now, depending on how you actually do the cauldron, that's going to stun a different sister. And each of those sisters has different abilities that harm the players from trying to win. So there's kind of this fun dynamic of stunning which sister in which order to kind of help you progress throughout the game. All in all, I think it's a really fun game, very aesthetically pleasing on the table to have that big cauldron in the middle. I think the artwork is really good. It's also really easy to teach and just a good way to kind of bring in that Halloween season. And next we have Mysterium Park, which is a game that is kind of similar to Similo, no pun intended, but this game is a little bit more complex, but you're going to have one player who's going to basically be playing a ghost and they are going to use pictures. They're going to use these giant, cool, beautiful artwork picture cards in order to use them as clues to lead players to a certain person first and then to a certain location second. And then at the end of the game, they're trying to lead them to that person and that location. And that will be basically the murderer of the ghost and where they did it. Now, how you're actually doing that is in the form of, once again, these picture cards. These picture cards have variety of random objects, random things on them. It's really hard to kind of tell what the ghost is really trying to say with these cards. It might be a color, it might be an object. And the ghost has a very certain character on the table that they're trying to lead each player to. Everyone is different. And so using those cards, they're trying to illuminate the players to choose that character. And as the game goes on, you're going to be running out of time. So the longer that each player takes to find the character that you're leading them to, the less chance you have to find the location that you're leading them to. Once all players have found their character, then you move on to the location phase where every player is going to be led to a certain location and a different location. Once you have led everyone to their character and led everyone to their location, then you will have three options at the table, all a character and a picture. And you have to convince everybody with three of your cards, which location combination you were trying to lead them to, who really murdered you as the ghost. It is such a fun game and it really works well with people that know each other because it, people might see things and be like, oh, Sam definitely looks at colors or Sam sees shapes really well. And so I think they might match up with this character that kind of looks like a clown. Maybe that's why he kind of gave this picture that kind of has a circus palette to it. There's just so many combinations, so many things, and it's just really, really fun to kind of get in the mind of uh, the other players and it and in the mind of the clue giver as well. It's a really, really fun game and it's very, very tense. And it also really brings in that Halloween vibe with a, a ghost trying to lead the players, not being able to talk to them, to their murderer and to the location that they were at. That is going to be Mysterium Park. Now let's go to my next suggestion. So the next game that I'm going to recommend is the Haunted Mansion Call of the Spirits. Now this is a game that really surprised me because usually I'm a little bit apprehensive on the Disney themed game. So I guess same with like the Hocus Pocus, that one really surprised me. But this is another one that I really enjoyed and it's the first competitive game on the list of Halloween recommendations that I'm giving you today. 
But the Haunted Mansion essentially has players trying to have the most points at the end of the game. There are going to be tons of ghosts that are going to be spread about the mansion. And this mansion will gather with more and more ghosts throughout the game. You're gonna be spending your time either moving around the board, battling other players to try and steal some of their ghosts, or you're gonna be rotating the endless hallway in the center of the table. But let's go back to the cards that you can find or the ghosts that you're trying to lure as a part of your party. Now, all of these cards kind of score differently. Some of them have, you know, different symbols that you're looking for. And the more symbols that you have, the more points you get. Some of them give you zero points, but paired with another card, give you a, a large amount of points. Some of them just give you a flat type amount of points. And so each of these is going to be scoring differently. And kind of the puzzle of the game is this really, really limited action economy that you have on your turn and how far you can reach around the board trying to get what you want. Now there's this other mechanic that kind of adds a layer of complexity called haunt. You might be gaining haunt by having the hitchhiking ghosts move through your space, or you might be gaining haunt by trying to battle other players bidding haunt against one another in order to take uh, each other's cards. But either way, haunt is going to be negative victory points at the end of the game. But players don't actually know how much haunt points you have because it's a face down pile in front of you. So you can kind of bluff your game. You might have six haunt cards, but they're all one or maybe you have two haunt cards, but they're both threes. And so there's kind of this mind game of, oh, you know, I'm actually not doing as bad as it seems, but you might be pretending to be doing much worse to kind of put the heat off of you. This game really, really surprises me. I, I just really enjoy it every single time we get it to the table. It is a blast to play. And the next game on my list is going to be Scooby-Doo the board game. Now this one I just got this year pretty recently, but the fact is, is I am a huge Scooby-Doo fan and there was just no way that I could not add this game to the list. Now what is being shown right now is going to be the deluxe edition of the game. This has that pre-painted miniatures. It also has the van miniature. It also comes with quite a few more monsters than the base game comes with. Uh, the base game comes with three monsters and I don't believe painted miniatures, but I still think this game is a very fun experience, especially for players that are huge fans of the Scooby-Doo universe. Now, how this game works is it's really fun. It is run by a very simple card system. Essentially, all players are going to be cooperatively trying to build traps in order to catch the monster. Now, uh, monster, ghost, you know, whatever you want to call it. The main system of the game are you're going to have Scooby cards. Now, these are just cards with a number on them. They'll sometimes have a special ability as well. And this deck of Scooby cards, you're all going to draw from and you're going to draw two cards. You're going to choose one to play right now. And then you're going to take the other one and you're going to put it in a face down pile called your save deck. Now, your save deck is going to be different than a discard pile, but I'll get to that in a second. That card that you kept on to, once all players have chosen one to keep, you're going to all play that card face up simultaneously, and then you're going to draw the top of the monster deck and place it face up. And you're going to look at all of the numbers and you're going to line them up from the lowest all the way up to the highest, and that's going to be the initiative order. Now, a player's turn can be, they'll move the amount on that card, they'll move around and end their turn at a location, then when they're at the location, they can do that location's action, usually collecting resources, sometimes, you know, repopulating an area that had uh, visitors that got scared. When the monster's turn comes up, it tells them how many spaces they move and what color arrows they're going to be following. If you look on the board, there's actually all these locations and each of them has an arrow going in and going out in a different color and in a different direction. Now, when you have the card, you're gonna be moving the monster through that. If they ever pass through one of the Scooby gang members, it's going to immediately discard the top two cards from their deck and put them into the discard pile, not in the save deck. Now, another concept is that if there is a haunt symbol on that card, it's going to have a special ability that's unique to that 
ghost. Each Scooby gang member has a one time ability that they can also use that gives them kind of a special thing that they can do. And you've also got the mystery machine, which can really help in a pinch where you can actually use it to move across the board to any location can really, really help out when you're in a tight spot. It's been really fun to kind of relive some of my favorite moments from the Scooby Doo franchise. This game honestly has really surprised me and I've even been playing it solo, which is weird. I don't usually play games solo, but for some reason, I think the Scooby Doo theme really gets me and I've just been able to play this one solo, which has been an absolute blast. Horrified is a game that I've been playing for a long, long time. And this is a cooperative game that is set in a universal monster setting where you're going to be going up against monsters like Frankenstein. You might be going up against the Invisible Man or the creature from the Black Lagoon or the mummy, and all of them are going to have different puzzles on their boards that you're trying to complete. Now, the way that you're gonna be completing those puzzles is with these item cards, these item cards that are going to be dispersed around the board throughout the game. Now, all of you as players are going to be moving around the board, picking up these item cards, going to either certain locations to spend the item cards in order to progress each of the monsters that you're going up against puzzle, all until you have either defeated all, or solved all the puzzles, or defeated all the monsters or the deck runs out, the monster deck runs out, and you all lose the game. The reason why I love this game so much is that all of the monsters that you play against are going to be asymmetric. They're going to be very, very different monsters. The game when you play against the mummy is a completely different game where you play against Frankenstein and his bride. It is just such a different puzzle and experience to kind of work through. And I also love that the game's core system is extremely easy. All you're doing on your turn is pretty much moving around, picking up items and trying to avoid monsters. There's also this kind of civilian mechanic where these uh, random civilians will appear around the board and these monsters, whenever they interact with that, they're going to take that civilian and essentially the terror track will kind of go up every single time that happens. If the terror track ever reaches the last space, then you will also lose the game. However, the bonus is that you can actually take those civilians to the location that they're looking for. And if you do, you get a perk card, which are super helpful cards uh, that can really, really help out in a pinch, um, giving you an edge against the monsters. Horrified has been in my game collection ever since its release. It is just a beautiful production, beautiful game. All of the monsters are so unique and fun to play against. I have never had a game of Horrified where I didn't enjoy the game immensely. This one is perfect for the Halloween season with all of the Universal Monsters theme. So definitely take a look at Horrified. And smoothly going from Horrified, we go to the Unmatched System, a game called Cobble and Fog. Now, if you don't know what the Unmatched System is, essentially it is a card driven uh, one versus one or two versus two uh, or free for all battle or game where you are going to be controlling your own character, trying to basically just take out all the health of your opponent. Now, the reason why I recommend Cobble and Fog in particular is that this theme is just perfect and all of these decks are themed so well to their characters. Who wouldn't want to have Sherlock going up against Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde or the Invisible Man up against Dracula? These characters are perfect for the Halloween season and they are all a blast to play. Cobble and Fog is actually probably one of the most well-loved unmatched sets of all the releases. This whole game system has so many different characters, but the Cobble and Fog set is one of the most loved sets of all. And you know what? I totally see why, because all these characters are very, very unique and very different. And the game at its core is very simple, where you're either going to be moving around, attacking your opponent, defending against your opponent, all trying to use your deck as best to defeat your opponent. Cobble and Fog is that perfect head-to-head -head game for the Halloween season, and I really recommend you checking it out. Now, I had to mention Disney Villainous in this list. I've been playing this game as a Halloween game ever since its release. Essentially, if you don't know what Villainous is, it is an asymmetric game where you are the villain and you are trying to complete your specific 
goal. Now, for example, you might be Captain Hook trying to lure Peter Pan over to the Jolly Roger and then defeat him at the Jolly Roger, or you might be Prince John trying to collect 20 power tokens in order to win the game, just get rich essentially. Or you might be Maleficent where you're just trying to curse the entire land. And so each of these villains is going to be going through their deck of cards, moving about their realm, gaining power and playing cards in order to complete that goal. Every single deck is built to complete their individual goal. And it's really helpful because each of these villains actually comes with a nice little handbook that literally shows what you have to do is your goal and how to achieve it with your deck. Luckily enough, I actually do strategy guides on this game. So if you are interested in Disney Villainous, you can go ahead and click any of the links down below that I left so that you can check out more about this Villainous game. I highly recommend it. It is good for uh, kind of families, people that are kind of wanting to get into the game industry, but it's also good for veteran gamers because there is a lot of strategy to this game as well. One of my favorite parts is that everybody's story is really self-absorbed where the only thing that can stop you is the heroes of your own story. You know, as Captain Hook, you're never going to have any of Ursula's heroes like Ariel coming up against you. It's going to be Peter Pan, the Lost Boys, Tinkerbell, and that sort. It really has a very fun flair and there's nothing more fun than kind of quoting the Disney movies while trying to complete your nefarious villainous goal. So I would highly recommend checking out Disney Villainous. Mythic Mischief is a new game to me as of this year, and it is one that I have been enjoying greatly. I have been looking for a game that is not chess, but kind of scratches that chess itch. If you don't know me, I actually do really, really love chess. And Mythic Mischief is a game that is deceivingly adorable in theme, but it's so much like chess in the fact that if you make one little mistake, you could find yourself losing the game. Still. It's wonderful. Essentially, in Mythic Mischief, you're going to be taking a group of students and there is a essentially a librarian called the Tome Keeper who's going to be moving around from point one to point B, and he's going to take the quickest path possible. Now, what you're trying to do is you're trying to use these corridor walls. You're trying to use some of your abilities, your taunts in order to make the Tome Keeper run into the other students of the opposing team. So by puzzling and using your actions, you know, you might be moving the Tome Keeper towards one of your player pieces by taunting them and in the way is one of your enemy's pieces. And so there you go, you catch it, you get a mischief point. There's so many ways to play this game. Each of the different teams is completely different. You know, the vampires are different than the ghosts. The ghosts are different than the zombies. The zombies are different than the trolls. All of them are very asymmetric and have a special ability that they're able to use. In addition to that, once the Tome Keeper has made it from point A to point B, he actually eats lunch and the after lunch special phase of the game begins. This is where players get an additional ability that they are able to use. Their asymmetric abilities get even more asymmetric and it gets really, really wild. Also, since the Tome Keeper just ate, he starts moving slower around the board. So it gives a little bit of a stretch in that last section in order to try to get a little bit more mischief points by leading the Tome Keeper in the path of your opponents. It is such a puzzly game. It is so very interesting. I find myself wanting to play again and again because I find myself sucking at it so much. I still have not beat my wife. Every single thing in this game has just top tier quality of components. It is a wonderful experience to open. And it really gives you that Halloween vibe. Now we have come to the most complex game on my list, but it is my favorite game for this season on my list, and that is going to be Vast the Mysterious Manor. Now, I come from the background of playing Vast the Crystal Caverns. Oh, I'm also wearing my uh, Vast the Mysterious Manor shirt right now, <laughs> um, but I absolutely love this game. Vast the Mysterious Manor is a completely asymmetric game, meaning that what one player is doing what one player is trying to do is completely different than what another player is trying to do. The Paladin player is trying to amp up, collect items in order to defeat and destroy, vanquish the spider. 
The spider player is trying to cause terror in the manor, trying to gain 12 terror points and then escape the manor in order to win the game. The skeletons are trying to hunt that paladin. Why is he disturbing their manor? They've been here resting for years, so they are trying to defeat the paladin. The manor's goal is to complete a certain number of seals, which are essentially lines of certain ghostly objects, and trying to shift the manor in a particular way in order to trap all of the other players in there forever. So you see that all of these players are going to be going around the board doing completely different things. The nice thing is that it kind of breaks it down in an action system that starts at the top and goes to the bottom on what a player can do on their turn, making it a bit easier. But the truth is, there isn't a single game that gives me the feeling that Vast gives me, where you're playing your own character doing its completely own thing, and your win condition is different than everybody at the table, and it's, in, it's directly involved with the other players at the table too. Everybody kind of helps each other in weird ways, and that's one of the reasons why I think Vast is such a fun game. With every player having a different goal, it is kind of a challenge to teach and to table, but really there is no better experience and it's such a perfect vibe for Halloween to have a haunted mansion. The theme is there, the game is there, trust me, the game is wonderful. And the aesthetics, some of the artwork, the best miniatures, I, it is just a beautiful production when it's laid out on the table. This game is perfect for the Halloween season. But that is my 10 recommendations for games that you should get for this Halloween season. I hope that this list helped you start somewhere in order to search for some new games to buy and play. But if this video did bring value to you, please drop a like and subscribe down below. That would really help the channel grow and be seen by more people. That is it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. Let's go ahead and drop the beat.